Hey, what's going on guys? It's Anton. So we're back with a brand new video. And today I'm going to show you guys how to use structures in Discord JS. Structures are basically a concept in Discord JS, and it allows you to pretty much extend upon a specific structure that's already part of Discord JS. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a list of available structures. So if I go over to the source code of Discord JS, and if I go down here, it seems like these are all of the available structures. And the way it works is it pretty much allows you to extend the current uh, built in, you know, classes like guild, message, uh, presence, client presence, and etc. And you can add additional properties or methods on top of it while also being able to reference the actual instance itself which makes it very powerful if you need to do additional things on top of that particular instance i know all this probably sounds like gibberish but we're going to go ahead and take a look at some examples and i'll show you guys how it works so let's close uh, that and let's go back to the documentation and the docs actually have some pretty cool examples well there's only one example but i'm going to show you guys how to use it so let's just say for example why why would you want to use structures in the first place let's say if you have a bot that's in multiple different guilds and each guild needs its own configuration that comes from the database and you want to save that configuration somewhere now the logical thing that you could do the simple thing you could do is you could create a new client.config an object on the client object and you can set this to a new map or collection and then you can map every single guild id to its corresponding document in the database that's fair you can definitely do that but what if you don't want to add everything to the client there are some things that you can extract away from the client itself and you could probably encapsulate it with its corresponding entity such as the guild now if we go back to the code the source code we can look at all the different structures that we can extend upon so for example some roles might have certain permissions like you know our own database permissions that we might uh, want to grant same thing with uh messages let's say if we want to build some kind of role reaction bot it's it's basically in the sense that each entity can have additional properties, okay? And instead of putting everything inside the client, we can start to abstract it away from the client and put it into its own corresponding entity. So anyways, let me go ahead and go inside source folder and I'm gonna create a folder called structures. And I'm gonna go ahead and create my own guild structure. So guild.js. And we're basically going to base this off of the example that was provided to us in the documentation. We're first going to import structures and we're gonna import it from discord.js. And what we wanna do is we wanna call structures.extend. Now you can see there's a bunch of different structures that you can extend. And like I said, it's literally the same thing from the documentation. If you look at it, you can compare. Okay. And when we call extend, it takes in two parameters. It takes in the structure and it's going to take in something called the extender, which is going to be a function. If you see over here, uh, extender function that takes the base class to extend as it's only prime that returns the extended class prototype. Okay. So we're going to basically extend guild. And then what we want to do is we want to pass in a function, a callback function rather. So the callback function is going to take in one parameter. Okay, you can name it whatever you want. You can literally name this object or whatever. It doesn't matter, but we're going to name it guild for just guild. Okay, now this callback function is basically this extender function. And what's going to happen is you're actually going to, well, the code, the source code is going to invoke that function. Okay, and if we actually look at extender, it's basically going to take in the structure to extend. Okay, and it's going to pretty much expand that class in a sense. So what we want to do next is we want to implement our own custom class. So class uh, custom guild extends and we want to extend guild or let me actually do this. Sorry about that extends guild. Okay, actually, you know what? Let me do one thing real quick because extender actually is going to take in one parameter and that parameter is going to be the actual structure. So we can, yeah, we can name this whatever you want. So you would basically, this parameter is going to be the class that you're going to actually extend. So if you name it lowercase g with guild, you're gonna have to do extends guild. But obviously whenever you are extending a class, well, classes by nature should have a capitalized uh, name well the first letter should be capitalized okay let's go ahead and continue and what we want to do next is we want to implement the constructor now the constructor is going to take in two parameters and how do i know it's only two it really depends on the structure that you are extending so if you actually want to find out you can go over to the documentation you can click on guild and if you look over here it takes in two parameters okay not every single uh, structure will take in two parameters for the constructor the channel takes in let me look for text channel 
text channel takes in two as well, but it takes in the guild and data Each message should take in three client data channel. So whatever structure you're extending, you need to go to the documentation and look for that actual class and then find out which parameters that you're going to take in for the construct. And then since we're extending a class, Okay, remember custom guild is now a subclass of guild, which is the parent class. Okay, we need to pass in the parameters into the superclass constructor just like that. Okay, and then after we can do whatever we want. So we're pretty much done. I'm just going to console log hello world. And we need to return the custom guild like this because remember, this is a function and it's going to return the extended structure okay so this is going to be a new class all right so how do we actually get this to work right because right now if i run my code it's not going to actually do anything so let me just do this source bot.js okay it's not going to do anything so what we want to do is we actually want to require this guild.js file right before the actual client has been instantiated right over here we want to require right before so we're going to do require structures guild just like that now if i save you're going to see it says hello world now our bot is actually only in one guild and one thing that i forgot to mention the reason why it's only logging once is because our current bot that we're using is only in one guild the point is is that it's invoking the custom guilds constructor now i'm going to actually use a bot that's in multiple different guilds so you'll see that it's going to log that many times the bot is actually in three guilds so it's going to log hello world three times but the point is and i actually forgot to mention this when i was recording this video is instead of actually having instances of guild objects well it's actually still an instance of a guild object or guild rather because it's the parent class of custom guild but we more specifically we actually have instances of custom guild let's say if our bot joins a new server okay the guild create event is going to be triggered the discord js library is going to cache that guild object into the collection and it's going to be an instance of a custom guild it's still going to be an instance of a guild class because remember the guild is a parent class of custom guild okay but custom guild has certain methods and properties that the guild class the parent does not have okay so hopefully that part makes sense if it doesn't i would highly suggest you guys look into object oriented programming because it would definitely help you guys out a lot with understanding how this works so now you're going to see it says hello world it's being logged three times because it's in three different guilds now to show you some more data we can console log data so you can see what it looks like and you can see that this is basically the raw data, but you can see we have the guild ID. Okay, now what, what exactly does this mean, right? We have our structures, what else can we do with it? Well, we can also create some other additional instance methods that are gonna to belong to this custom guild structure. So for example, I can do something like get guild config, okay? And this could hypothetically be any config. Let's just return, uh, let's do prefix default rule two, three. Now, if I want to actually call this method, on the guild object, I can, all right? Because this is the actual class itself. This is the actual instance that is being used instead of the actual guild instance. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and inside the, the ready event, I'm gonna go ahead and reference client.guilds cache, and I'm gonna go through every single guild and watch this guild dot get guild config it's not popping up in the intellisense okay and if you're using typescript you actually need to cast this into the custom guild instance now if i save and if i refresh seems like a uh, logged in it's not uh oh wait it's it returns it doesn't log so you can see it returned this three times because we called it three times all right, and we can do whatever we want so you can use this to get data from a database that belongs to a particular guild Okay, and when the bot first logs in, you can actually set up some kind of function here where you can do something like uh, fetch guild configs or initialize guild configs. And then inside the constructor, you can call fetch guild configs. And then this would call the database, initialize all of the configurations. And you don't need to create a separate or you don't need to create a map for everything. You can actually start defining instance fields inside your class so if for example you can do something like this dot prefix is equal to null okay or let me do this up here this dot prefix equal null and then when i call get when i call up uh, and when i call fetch guild configs i can set this dot prefix equal to exclamation mark and now let me do one more thing get guild prefix we'll return this dot prefix 
Okay, and so these should all be just an exclamation mark. Well, let me actually change this to a dollar sign. And let's go ahead and do guild.get guild prefix. Okay. And there you go, dollar sign. And this is not the only thing that we can extend. Like I said, if I want to build some kind of bot where only specific roles have certain permissions, well, you might as well guess that I can actually extend the role structure. And inside the role structure, right, let me actually just copy and paste this role.js. So this structure would apply to each role that's in the guild. Okay. And let me just, uh, let me do this really quick before I finish this video, just so you guys at least have an understanding, more of an understanding. So we need to pass in client data and guild. So let me go ahead and get rid of all of these uh, methods and let's rename this as custom guild or custom role. Just make sure, uh, yep. And let's console log data. So this should log all of the roles that are in the, uh, the server. So we're gonna go ahead and require this structure. So require structures role. And now if I look at the logs, it should, log all the roles. So you can see we have the me6 role, we have a Node.js role, JavaScript role, Python, etc. There's a whole bunch of roles. We get Discord bots, moderator. These are all the roles in amongst all of the guilds that are bought us in. Okay, and for each role, you can imagine that I can make a database call. Okay, I can check the database to see what privileges this role or which special privileges this role should have. Okay. And instead of having to worry about having such a complex collection of all of the different permissions for our bots, we can actually just decouple everything by extending structures and then putting everything in its own structure. So I hope all this made sense and hopefully this will uh, enhance your bots and your code base. I'm really hoping that more people use this because it's very powerful. It's very good for, especially uh, if you're using like if you're trying to build some kind of music bot from scratch using FFmpeg and YTDL, if you're not using Lavalink, this is perfect for setting up a queue for every single server. Because like I said, each structure is going to have its own fields to its own guild, basically. Same thing with the role, same thing with the message, perfect for literally anything. So that's pretty much it for this whole tutorial, and I hope it made sense, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.